Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. I hope everybody can hear me clearly. Okay, so, uh, so today I will introduce the real-time intervital microscopy technique that can facilitate the in vivo several level imaging of various internal organs in a live animal model. Okay, this is my COI, of course. Okay, so the brief background of my introduction, my, uh, I received a PhD in electrical engineering in 2005, and then I moved to Harvard Medical School, Boston, uh, in MGH. And then I worked there as a research fellow from 2005 to 2010. And then in 2010, I came back to Korea and then started work as an assistant professor in KAIST. It's a Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology. And then I still working there as an associate professor. And then I started this IBM Technology at 2017 and then serving as a CEO and CTO until now. Okay, so this is what I do in my lab. So we first try to be able to uh, develop an intravital microscopy system that can capture real-time cellular level images from various tissue and organs. And then mostly through collaboration, we have done a lot of you know, live imaging analysis in various human disease animal models. So this is what it's like. So this is the uh, system uh, in my lab at KAIST. So this is a custom built video rate comfort and two-photon intermittent microscopy system. So uh, the unique thing of this system is it's a full custom built system. So we, I can, you know, and it has a you know, very flexible design. So I can easily modify uh, my system for each specific application of live animal imaging. And then it's very much optimized for in vivo imaging of live uh, mouse model. And then it can acquire uh, real-time imaging in video rate uh, of uh, like 30 to 100 frames per second. So basically 130 images or 100 images per second with 512 by 512 pixels because it has a very fast uh, laser scanner inside. And then for both of the comfort core and two button imaging mode, it can acquire four uh, fluorescence signal simultaneously. And then it can achieve, it can easily achieve a sub-micrometer resolution in in vivo live animal model. So this is the one summary slide I open, I show many times in the beginning of my talk. So all this image is obtained from the uh, live mouse model on the NSC here. So, uh, and then we have imaged almost every organ and tissue inside the mouse model. It includes like a bone marrow, and these are the bone marrow cell inside, of course, this red dot, and the brain, brain tumor, and the retina in the mouse, uh, in the eye, skin, we well, have polycle in the skin, and various tumors. And uh, this is one example uh, of colon cancer inside the mouse model, pancreas, spleen, well, GI tract, adipose tissue uh, inside the mouse model, prostate, placenta in the pregnant mouse, and various lymph nodes, uh, like a subcutaneous uh, inguinal lymph node, or mesenteral lymph node, cervical lymph node, and others as well. And then memory tissue, and then kidney, and then some transplanted organ, and the skeletal muscle, liver, long heart, thyroid, and trachea, and so on, like a thymus. So all this we have, you know, developed a small apparatus and devices that can enable us to take uh, this high quality, uh, very much stabilized imaging from the, all this uh, different organ and tissue in a live mouse model. And then these are just you know, selected publication list from my group. So we have successfully imaged the you know, various organs and tissues, and then we have done a lot of you know, functional imaging to show the microcirculation, the blood flow, and then also the drug delivery and the efficacy monitoring, and then also cell delivery and transplantation model as well. Yeah, so this is a very powerful and then very useful system 
to provide the uh, live images in the NSTAID mouse model. But, the, well, but this, is, this is too difficult to use for most of the biology people. So I tried to commercialize and I tried to you know, pack all these things into a single box like this. So this is the picture, this is the portal of the, our recent model, IBM CMS3. This is a third generation model from my company, IBM Technology. It's a dual mode, inter vital comfort core and two bottom microscope. So everything is integrated into one single box. And then this is, of course, it's an optimized system for in vivo, several level inter vital imaging of a live animal model. So as you can see in this picture, this is all in a package system. So it can provide, so it has you know, several advantages like the easy installation and cost and space saving, plus high usability as well. So it's really, you know, it's designed in such a way to be easily used by the uh, first comers. And then, uh, so since it has integrated with the two photo laser system inside, so you can you can provide in you know, a hands free maintenance of the two photon laser system, and then this system is probably integrated with high speed laser scanner for real time imaging, as I told in before in previous slides, and it can acquire thirty frames per sec, thirty frames per second with a five hundred twelve by five hundred twelve pixel. That's the standard model. Uh, uh, for the demonstration. And then we can customize it. It can be customized to have even higher speed, like 100 frames per second upon request. And then you can do two photon imaging with four simultaneous channel with compact 920 nanometer femtosecond pulse laser module. Uh, this 920 nanometer femtosecond pulse laser is inside this box. So, uh, so you don't need additional space, but but there, but if you prefer to use conventional tunable wavelength femtosecond laser, like a titanium sapphire laser, then that, that kind of laser can be placed right next to this laser, uh, this microscope box, and then it can be connected through uh, the additional optics, and they put it into the, uh, this microscope through the additional optical port behind this box. And then, of course, and then it can also do compact core imaging as well. Uh, with the pore detectors, uh, with the fiber coupled, you know, CW laser module. And then uh, I can proudly say uh, our microscope is integrated with automatic live tissue motion compensation functions. So you don't need to worry about the motion of the tissue during the imaging. And then, uh, yeah, as I explained, it has additional optical ports to accommodate additional lasers, like the tunable pentasecond pulse laser system. And then it also provides a touchpad tablet for live animal body temperature monitoring and maintenance, like the heating function as well. And then we also provide a comprehensive set of apparatus and accessories for various internal organ imaging. So these are the uh, installation site or demo site until now. Okay, so I believe many of you already uh, have some idea what is the intravital microscopy. But this is the uh, kind of introductory slides I already show. So compared to the X-ray, CT, or MRI that can provide tissue level visualization in a live organism, the intravital microscopy is a technique that can provide several level video in live animals, like this in the middle. So this is the uh, one uh, live video obtained from the lung of a sepsis mouse model. In green, you are, uh, we, sh we are showing the blood circulation in green. And the red color is actually a neutral pill inside the blood vessel uh, in the lung of this sepsis mouse model. So as you can see, this red color is a neutral pill. They you know, move around in the beginning. And then suddenly, they make uh, one small cluster. And then this cluster blocks the uh, one arterial here. So again, so this cluster blocked the arterial and then it completely stopped the blood flow in entire this area, except the small part over here. So again, okay, like this. So blood flow, it just stopped here. So this is just very, this is a very good example that what intravital microscopy can do. So intravital microscopy 
can provide uh, this very detailed live video in cellular level in live animal model. So this is how I did. So this is one of the accessory and apparatus we provide with our microscope. So this is a stabilized long imaging window. So in the middle, so if you can hear, we have a small hole here, so we can suck out the air inside this imaging chamber through this tube. So thereby we can build up some negative air pressure inside this chamber. And then by doing that, we can stabilize, we can stop the you know, uh, motion of the lung uh, temporarily. So only this part of the lung is stabilized against the uh, transparent cover glass here. And after this setting, we can obtain this you know, stabilized high resolution cellular level live cell imaging uh, from the lung of this live mouse model. Okay, and then as I told you, uh, our system can do real-time imaging with 30 frames per second. And then that is fast enough to visualize the uh, uh, flowing red blood cell inside the vessel. So on the left side, this is the actually low data obtained in uh, 30 frames per second. Uh, and in this particular example, we use type 2 JFP mouse. So all the vascular endocellular cell express JFP. So in green process, as you shown in here. So you can nicely see the vessel and capillaries in, this, uh, in the mouse, in the lung. And then what it did was we take out the small volume of the blood and then we label the red blood cell, RBC, uh, with a uh, red flow 4, VID. And then we inject it back to another mouse and then image the lung. Then we can see this kind of movies. So now you can see, you know, you can see this, all this red thing, red dot is actually this labeled red blood cell. And then so you can, you know, easily track the individual red blood cell inside the vessel. So on the, uh, on the left side, this is some uh, image process data. So, so you can see, so even after this stabilization, even after the, this stabilization using the suction, Still, we have this residual you know, tissue motion, right? And then this tissue motion can be automatically compensated by using our software. And then by doing that, we can increase the SNR by doing the frame averaging. So all this green signal is enhanced by frame averaging with the motion compensation. And then we overlay our real-time RBC flows data, the red color data on it onto this green color batch culture, and then you can nicely see the uh, trap the flow of this red blood cell inside the vessel. This is another example. So again, our system is 30 frames per second, the real time imaging system. So it can, again, so it can track the you know, uh, flowing cell inside the vessel. And this is our example. This is another accessory we provide for heart imaging. So same principle, we can suck out the air, through this tube and they build up the negative pressure enough to stabilize the uh, motion of the beating heart uh, during the imaging. But only this part of the heart is stabilized. So all other parts of the heart is freely beating. So this mouse is kept alive during this heart imaging. And then 30 frames per second is fast enough to see the individual red blood cell as shown in here again. Okay. So let me zoom in so you can see this uh, Lady color is the flowing red blood cell inside the heart, uh, inside the vessel of the heart. Uh, okay, so uh, I, I, I just saw the one question uh, in the QA. So let me just answer this one. So, in the sepsis mouse model, uh, how long can long imaging to be observed? Yeah. So we did it up to three hours actually, but uh, I, uh, we can extend it up to you know six uh, uh, more than three hours actually. So once this, uh, so we did this preparation, we normally image it up to uh, two to three hours, but we can extend it to up to you know six hours if necessary. 
Okay, and this is another example of uh, uh, tensor geography imaging using the dorsal skin polyp chamber, which I will explain more detail later. It's widely used to uh, monitor the cancer geography, cancer geography model uh, using noodle mouse and human cancer cell. And then this is one example. So in this data, in the middle, this is again live video. This is raw data obtained from this setting. So in this example, what it did was this blue is actually cancer cell uh, with a pseudo color. Actually, it's a geography expressing cell. So, but we pseudo labeled it in blue. So we injected this LRC GFP into the middle of this dorsal skin pore chamber and then let it grow until two weeks. So the tumors, this GFP expressing LRC tumor grows inside. And then we did the same thing. We inject the uh, RBC, uh, draw out the RBC, uh, blood, label the RBC, print to label the RBC, and then inject intravenous inject it back through the template. And at the same time, what it did was we inject anti CD31 antibody conjugate with the lead propyl. And then this is CD31 is a pan endothelial cell marker. Okay. So this anti CD31 antibody conjugate with the propyl. Once it's intravenously injected, it, it circulates the whole body and then label the systemically labeled the endocellular cell. So all this red color is the CD31 labeled uh, blood vessel, endocellular cell. So again, this our 30 frames per second is fast enough to see the flow of this red blood cell. So we can you know, easily monitor the blood flow inside this uh, tumor, right? So in the middle, this vessel is well perfused, so RBC is flowing very well. But on this side, if you look at it, this RBC flow is much more sluggish, right? It's because this blue uh, tumor cell is physically contact with this vessel. And then actually this tumor, this blue tumor cell, is compress uh, this blood vessel, and thereby it reduces the speed of the blood flow uh, in this particular vessel. So once you look at it in microscopic scale, in cellular level, in very high speed, like uh, this video rate, then you can have a lot of, you can draw out a lot of information what's going on in cellular level in live mouse model. And, uh, and this is our one of the, and then, you know, this real time imaging can be done up to several hours, but uh, that's not, but this is not the terminal experiment. We can repeat the same observation in the same mouse at later time point. So after the imaging, we can let the mouse to be recovered in a uh, cage. And then we can bring the mouse again and the image at the later time point. So this is one example. So in this particular example, uh, we made the uh, non alcoholic petty liver disease mouse model for 21 days by providing a special diet, MGD diet. And then with this MCD diet, this mouse model gradually developed the uh, gradually developed the fatty liver. Okay, like this. So normal diet, and then two days with MCD diet, and then seven days. And then this yellow color is showing the lipid droplet in the hepatocyte. And fourteen days, like this and 21 days, you can see the increase of this, uh, of the repeated droplet. Uh, in this particular example, uh, I already explained the CD31. The CD31 antibody conjugate labeled the liver sinusoid endocellular cell uh, in blue here. And then the repeated droplet was presently labeled by a uh, noble repeated droplet probe called uh, SF44. This SF44, can be uh, was intravenously injected at uh, at twenty minutes before the imaging, and then this SS forty four was uh, getting to the hepatocyte and then nicely label the lipid droplet uh, fluorescently, and then after this preparation, uh, we can easily visualize the uh, lipid droplet in the hepatocyte like this. So again, two days, seven day, 14 day, and 21 days. And then we can see you know, how this several level uh, repeat droplet changes over time. 
Uh, this is another uh, imaging chamber. Uh, it's pancreas imaging chamber. So in this example, uh, what we did was we implanted this imaging window onto the uh, side of the mouse model, the abdominal and the side of the mouse model. And then we placed the uh, uh, pancreas in the middle of this imaging window, pancreas imaging window like this. And then we inject the uh, mouse pancreatic cancer cell called panco 2 draft cell in here. And then we can we keep this mouse to carry this uh, pancreas imaging chamber uh, together with this panco 2 draft cell inside. And then this tumor you know, grows over time like this, day 7, 11, to N15. And then the beauty of this imaging chamber is we can find exactly the same location again, again, and again and then see what happens in several level with the, uh, with the uh, time scale of several days or even several weeks. So this is the image obtained at day nine, and this is the image obtained at day 14 upon, uh, after this preparation. Actually, this is the same, exactly the same location. And then you can see the increase of this panko 2 GFP cancer cell. And together with it, you can see the remodeling of the blood vessel uh, labeled by CD31. So this is the same mouse, same location, and at different time point. And then, you know, we can do it in every day. So this is day 9, day 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And then as you can see, you can see the daily growth of this cancer cell in green. And then you can also see the change of the blood vessel. So from day nine to day 10, well, we don't see you know, much changes. And then from day 10 to day 11, you can see the increase of the tumor cell is accelerated. And at the same time, you can see the change of the blood vessel, especially here. The vessel was a little bit more dilated and get disorganized. And then day 12 become more, so more chaotic uh, blood vessel network. And day 13, the certain area now shows a regression of the blood vessel from here, here, here. You can now see the regression of the blood vessel together with the uh, tumor cell growth. Okay. okay, so I showed you several examples. Okay, compared to the macroscopic imaging uh, technology, such as X ray or PET or MRI, this microscopic scan imaging uh, enabled by intermittent microscopy. Can, can you know enable the, allow you to obtain the CDD, 3D several level molecular functional uh, visualization of a live model. So these are the another example. So I already explained along. This is the bone marrow in the middle and then skin uh, on the right side. And all these small things, small dot is individual live uh, cells in the in these tissues. So all these are the very good example. So uh, our intramitter microscopy enables a dynamic 3D imaging of various cellular level dynamics, such as cell trafficking, like a cell movement, or cell to cell, or cell to microenvironment interaction inside the live preclinical animal model in vivo. And also, you know, we can we can see the process cell, but in addition, we can see the drugs as well once it's presently labeled. So on the left side, what you are looking at is adapt adaptively transferred T cell for uh, cancer immune uh, modulations. And these red bar, red thing is actually transfer delivered T cell, targeting uh, and arrive in the cancer cell and then do the interactions. In the middle, the red color is the nanoparticle and green color is the cancer cell and blue is the vessel. And then this is the, uh, just one single image that show how this uh, delivered drug nanocarrier, nanoparticle, delivered through the, uh, this blue uh, blood vessel and then delivered into the, this green drip expansion cancer cell. On the right side, this is real-time data showing the, how uh, this red color is a nanoparticle. And then you can see the, how this nanoparticle, so let me, let's wait to, until this movie starts. Okay, now the movie starts again. So this is when we inject the uh, nanoparticle intravenously through the tail vein. And then now you can see how you know, this nanoparticle arrived, flowed into the liver sinusoid vessel, and then started to be accumulated in the uh, vessel like this, inside the liver. 
So all these three, uh, three data is a very good uh, example. So for drug development, this intramental microscopy enables a direct imaging analysis of a drug delivery to the target tissue or to the cell. And then also we can monitor the drug efficacy using process biomarker that can uh, provide, that can facilitate the validation of the mode of action of the drugs in a live clinical animal model in vivo. Okay, from now on, uh, I will explain how we achieve this you know, live cell, uh, live cellular level imaging in the various tissue and organs. Okay, let me just go through. So the unique thing of our microscope is it equipped with ultra high speed in you know, the laser scanners. So it can, we can do you know, very high speed imaging. The standard version provides 30 frames, of, enables 30 frames per second. And our ultra high speed version can provide the maximum of 100 frames per second with the 512 pixels. And then you know, another important thing is this high speed, high imaging speed capability enables us to achieve very effective motion compensations. So even with this real time imaging capability, still we will see this kind of you know, tissue motion in the mouse model. So even if the mouse is anesthetized, still mouse is breathing air, so lung is expanding and collapsing continuously, and also heart is beating to provide the blood circulation. And then sometimes even after the uh, anesthetization, the skeletal muscle twitches every once in a while. And all those physiological, uh, physiological function induce microscopic scale tissue motion uh, during the imaging. So our approach is first we acquire real-time videos like this. So our system is capable of real-time imaging. And it's fast enough to see the, uh, the, this you know, several level details in the live mouse model. And then what we can do was we can do frame by frame motion compensation. So every frame will be you know, compensated automatically. And then at the end, we can stabilize the motion like this. So this motion compensation function is really necessary in almost all live animal imaging applications. So from this kind of a motion, if, you're, if you don't have a motion compensation function, you will end up with these blurred images, but, but you can compare the motion compensated imaging result. And then if you think about it, if your system is slow, like one frames per second or two frames per second, then you will, even, well, you will be naturally end up in this kind of blurred images only. This is another example. Actually, this is uh, from the kidney of the live mouse model. So again, you can see, you will definitely need this motion compensation function to acquire these high resolution images uh, from the live tissue in a live mouse model. And then this is how it works. So this is the screenshot, uh, the screen captured uh, video of our software. So this is the real time video and this is the average video. And then what you need to do is you just uh, click the, uh, select the which color you wanna use as your uh, reference channel and then just click the capture and then it will automatically provide you this motion compensated images. In, a several, in just within several seconds. Okay, let me start again. So you can see, we just select the which color and then we just press the uh, capture button. Then you will acquire this uh, and then you will generate this motion compensated images from this movement and then compensate, automatically compensate in this movement. And then uh, we made our algorithm can deal with all different kinds of motion from various organ and tissues. So our, system, our motion compensation algorithm is an adaptive, adaptive algorithm. So it can deal with wide variety of the uh, tissue motion in live animal model. And then uh, we also provide this uh, uh, body temperature monitoring and feedback heat control system as well. So, uh, as you may know, once anesthetized, the mouse body temperature drops very rapidly. So to keep the mouse to be alive 
and then physiologically uh, same, we, we need to heat up the mouse model. Okay. So what we do was we use lactate, we provide a lactate probe that can be inserted through the anus and then monitor the uh, body core temperature. And then we have a feedback controller with a heating system. So all this uh, plate, all this uh, bottom plate is heated up to keep the body temperature to be stable, like, uh, 30, like 37 degrees Celsius, as shown it here. And then also we have a, a glass heater as well. So this glass uh, area to see the tissue underneath, this whole thing is also can be heated up. And then we also provide a uh, temperature indicator, indicator that's a temperature sensor to monitor the local tissue temperature as well at the same time. And then we have a uh, sliding system. So uh, in front of the, uh, our microscope, we can open up this sliding door. And then we have uh, this uh, uh, 3D motorized stage with the plating, uh, the plate holding system. So you can prefer your mouse animal model with the uh, on the plating, uh, heating plate uh, right next to the, this microscope. And then the whole this heating plate can be uh, is told into the center of this moving stage with a sliding lane system. And then once you place it, you can put it back like this and then close the door and you can start the uh, imaging. And then our system is a uh, light tight system. So you don't need a dark room to operate this microscope. And then it also has additional port on the side that can connect the, uh, uh, connect the L2 for gas sanitization system, for gas sanitization. So we have you know, gas, uh, gas tube adapter on the side of our microscope. So you can connect your gas sanitization system through these gas adapters and then, uh, and then tube. Okay, and then let me explain about the, uh, what you can do with the compact photon imaging mode and two photon imaging mode. So as you may know, uh, the compact photon microscope in live tissue uh, it can achieve imaging depths of 100 to 200 micrometer, depending on the uh, depending on the wavelengths and then depending on the tissue types. And then the good thing of a compact form microscope is you can easily increase the uh, profile number of the profile for the imaging, and it's very efficient because it's a uh, single photon excitations. So for multicolor uh, imaging, this compact form compact form imaging mode is better solutions. But two photon microscope, uh, it can penetrate a little more. So imaging, typical imaging depths is it also depending on the type of tissue, but the, uh, it, can, it can achieve imaging depths of the 250 to uh, even 100 micrometer uh, with the very high laser powers in the live tissue. But the, well, practically it's more like 250 to 500 micrometer is the kind of the maximum to the tissue, live tissue. But, the, but anyway, com compared to the compact photon imaging mode, this two photon, micro, two photon, imaging, two photon imaging mode can provide well, deeper imaging penetration and thereby it's a better solution if you need the deeper, deeper tissue imaging in live animal model. But this the advantage of a two photon microscope, uh, two photon imaging mode is you only have a one wavelength. So the number of a proper you can excite at the same time is kind of limited. So for like a uh, multicolor imaging, the compact microscope uh, would be the better solutions. But still, this two photon microscope can facilitate the multicolor imaging, but your choice of a profile is rather limited for multicolor imaging. But still, this two photon microscope is good enough to image the green and red profile at the same time. So I don't, I don't, I may not need to explain these slides. So let me pass through. So this is just uh, another example. The compact micro using compact imaging mode, you can definitely can get the section of the imaging in the live tissue. So this is our imaging data obtained from the uh, inguinal adipose tissue in vivo in the live mouse model. Uh, in this particular example, we use adiponectin cree crossed with MTMG adipose uh, mouse. So we can see the adipocyte with the green color, the membrane GFP. So the green color is the uh, adipocyte and red color is the membrane TD tomato was expressed in all other cells. And then in the adipose tissue, it's mostly vessel. 
So all this red color uh, is the mostly uh, red uh, endocellular cell. And then, yeah, of course, this compact microscope, this is the uh, GS type images, not from the surface, actually. This is a four micrometer interval uh, GS type compact images obtained from the uh, inguinal tissue, inguinal deposit tissue. And then we can easily achieve the you know, sub micrometer resolution. So if you get carefully, you can see this in the membrane blabbing and also extracellular batch process as well here, like this. Okay, so this is the you know very good example to show you we can easily achieve you know subcellular level three D images uh, in the live tissue by using compact core imaging mode, uh, and then this data was also obtained by using the compact core imaging mode, which I already explained before. Okay, and then let me explain about the two photon microscope. So two photon microscope can achieve deeper tissue imaging by using longer wavelengths near infrared pentasecond pulse laser. So if you can hear by using uh, this NIR near infrared pentasecond pulse laser, you can achieve these two photon excitations like this. These two low energy photon can be observed into the one single proper and they're facilitating the uh, excitation and then uh, process uh, emissions. And then this process, two photon excitation process can only happen at the focus. So you can intrinsically have, you know, sectioning capability in the sick tissue, like a compact microscope. And then the another good thing is this two photon microscope, in addition to the process imaging, this two microscope can generate bulk harmony generation signal, such as the second harmony generation signal. And then the good thing is this second harmony generation, it's not process signal. This second harmony generation signal can be very effectively generated from the uh, certain biological molecule, such as the collagen, microtubule, and other regular protein fibers. Okay, and then this second harmony generation is independent process uh, or uh, uh, of a process signal. So we can combine it together without any, without additional labeling. So compared to two photon excitation process, the second image generation can happen everywhere, uh, but mainly in the collagen or other fiber, uh, uh, other protein fibers. And actually this is the one data uh, obtained from the liver fiber system model. So all this green color is collagen fiber bundle in the liver fiber system model. And then without additional labeling, we can well, easily visualize the collagen uh, in the live tissue. And then this red color is actually the bit of droplet. And then this is another uh, example. So on the left side, this is actually skin. So all this blue is collagen in the dermis. So this blue is normal collagen. And then in the middle, in this green, is a private collagen of liver fibrosis in the liver. And then on the right side, uh, this red color, so this is streaks of the red color is the uh, actually collagen and the passia. But if you see this periodic structure, this is sarcomere myofilament inside the myocyte. Okay, so this red color, this periodic red color is the uh, myofilament inside the uh, inside the uh, myocyte in the muscle. Okay, so this is our uh, and this is our, you know, some visualization data obtained from the liver fibers model. Okay, okay. So in this model, so let me zoom in. So we can nicely visualize the uh, this peristalsis the collagen uh, in the liver, and at the same time using SF forty four, we can visualize the lipid droplet as well. So compared to the normal liver, we can easily see that this huge increase of the collagen uh, in this uh, uh, liver fibers model. And then also this, this is a two photo microscope system. So we can do 3D rendering like this. So we can nicely see uh, this collagen bundle is you know, surrounding certain structure inside. And this is the uh, wide area dual mode image, dual mode two photon and compact microscope image data obtained by using our uh, CM model. Uh, so in this example, we combine the uh, two photon imaging mode and compact core imaging mode. Okay, and then in this particular example, we use psi one wave plus 
And then, so all the peripheral nerve express yellow process proteins. So we can nicely see the peripheral nerve uh, and then in the muscle, this is the neuromuscular junction. And then, and then this uh, uh, red color is the second generation signal uh, showing the sarcomere myopilament in the myocyte. So this uh, YFP and the second generation signal was obtained by using uh, two photon uh, imaging mode. And then we switched it into the uh, convocal mode and then using near infrared probe, we imaged the CD31. So basically the uh, vascular endocellular cell. And then this is the uh, maximum intensity projection images. So you can see these nice uh, neuromuscular junctions in yellow, uh, in green color. Okay, and then we also provide the uh, uh, image processing software as well. So for 2D, 3D, or 4D, like a 3D time-lapse data can be visualized by using our uh, software. Okay, and then uh, uh, let me show you, now let me quickly go through the uh, preparation of the mouse model for each specific organ and tissue imaging. So this is the preparation for the ESP images, as you can see here. We provided this U-shaped glass, U-shaped bracket, and then you place the uh, transparent cover glass, and then this ear skin can be attached to the transparent cover glass, and then you now we can image it in several level. And, and this is our data published in JCB. So in this example, what we did was we inject by using micro injector, we inject a very small amount of the protein, the red color, uh, this red process protein in here. So it's KLS protein labeled with the red flow four. We inject a very small amount of this protein and then observe the uh, recruitment of the neutrophil and macrophage up to six hours uh, in the skin. And this is the input of the imaging. So this is uh, another data, uh, our another data showing the extravagation of a T cell and B cell uh, in the lymph node. So if you look at here, this is the preparation for the popliteal lymph node uh, in the middle here. And this is the bone marrow images. So uh, uh, for bone marrow images, we normally image the calvarial bone uh, because it's just very thin. So we, without any uh, preparation, we just make a skin incision and expose the cranial, cranial bone skull. And then we can easily penetrate the inside and then visualize the uh, bone marrow vessel. Uh, in here, each blue color is the bone marrow uh, vessel and red color is actually transplanted the bone marrow cell. And then this is a very wide area uh, mosaic images with a time scan. And then this is the uh, one magnified images for obtained for five hours. So you can see the you know, behavior of the, this transplant bone metal cell. You can see the preparation, for example. So in you know, a cell division like this, here, here. And then you can also see the you know, migration of the bone metal cell into uh, this cell here. And this is the preparation for the small intestine imaging. Like we extract the small intestine and then make an incision, expose the lumen, and then we observe the uh, periaxial transport. And then, you know, movement of the uh, lymphatic endocellular cell by using proxon GP mouse model. So you can see the, this periaxial is observed through the single villi and then transported through the lymphatic vessel in 90 minutes after the application of this peri process bariaxia. And this is the liver imaging preparation. So uh, we put the mouse on the back and then we place this uh, bracket and then expose the liver. And there is other you know, imaging, uh, imaging chamber technique uh, available. So those are skin point chamber. It has been used for cancer direct imaging. And then we can do cranial imaging. We can prepare cranial imaging window for long-term repeated brain imaging. And then we can we also provide various abdominal organ imaging window as well. So we integrate, we kind of uh, import all this imaging technology into our microscope and then modify it to be readily available, readily integrated with, readily used with our microscope setup. So this is just dosa skin pore chamber surgery. So like we stretch the uh, dosa skin and then using the sutures 
and then we expose the uh, circuit tissue and then uh, inject the cancer cell in the middle like this. And then we put the transferred cover glass like this. And this is our YouTube video. And then we place it onto the, uh, our stage and then put it back using the sliding system. And then visualize the, uh, the cancer cell in the dermal skin. So like uh, two hours, six hours and 24 hours. So this is either, you know, our data showing the nanoparticle delivery at two hour, six hour and 24 hours with this setting. This green color is the breast cancer cell, MD and B231. And as you can see, this blue is the blood vessel. And you can see how this red color nanoparticle is delivered and distributed along with the uh, cancer cell. And then this is the observation of the uh, same vessel at three days interval from day seven, 10, 13, with this GFPB expression cancer cell and then uh, lead vessels. Okay, and then cranial imaging window surgery is uh, showing like here. So expose the skull and then using the drill to make a uh, three millimeter to diameter hole. And then we and then so basically remove the skull and then we place the transparent cover glass and then put UV cure epoxy to seal up the exposed area. Once prepared, then we can we, we can use our you know, set tax device to hold the uh, head tightly and then we can image the brain. And then with this setting, uh, with this uh, uh, cranial imaging window setting, we can image the same mouse again and again up to several months actually. Like this, this is a such days observation. So you can see the you know, individual, the you know, same vessel here in the middle, and also same, you know, in this case, it is astrocyte. We can observe the same astrocyte over uh, uh, this day 30, but we can extend it up to several months or even a year. And then, well, this year we reported one result about the monitoring uh, of the brain in the cerebral microinfarction model. So it is like a day zero to day 30. And then you can see the you know, several level changes using our uh, cranial image window. You can see the you know, breakdown of the transient, you know, breakdown of the BBB at day three. So if you look at it, this is the same vessel, same location in the same mouse from day zero, day three and day five. So you can find the same vessel like this, same vessel area. And then you can see the reach of a presence flow from the vessel at day three. And at day five, it's really probably like this, like a day zero. So this kind of you know, transient you know, dysfunction can be also nicely you know, visualized by using the intravector microscope. And then also you know, imaging chamber techniques. And this is the uh, one day, the 24 hour imaging showing the uh, the cellular level changes in the pericyte. So this red color is actually pericyte, and then you can see this pericyte uh, is extend its uh, process along the, this blue uh, endocellular cell like this. So basically, it recover the pericyte vessel coverage. And this is pancreas image window, which I showed you. So this is the setting. Uh, the, all this hold, holding system and this imaging uh, mounting chamber was also designed by my, uh, our IBM technology and then provided together. And then it enables for this repeated long-term imaging of the, this cancer drug the model at the same site. Uh, this is pancreas and spleen imaging visual and kidney as well. And this is a long imaging preparation. So we first need to uh, intubate and then we connect the, uh, this mouse to the ventilator to, to keep the mouse to breathe air. And then this is the preparation of the stabilize, long stabilization window. And then, you know, we sliding it back to the, uh, our microscope and do the images. And this is our typical imaging data. This one I explained it already. So this is a heart imaging chamber. Okay, due to time limitation, let me just uh, quickly go through. And then we also have uh, an endomicroscopy option as well. Uh, so endomicroscopy is uh, like a 
needle with a diameter of around one millimeter. It looks like this. And then this endomicroscope can be inserted into the small opening like this. So in this particular example, we insert this imaging probe, endoscopic imaging probe, so the lip bone, and then image the heart, uh, like this. Uh, like uh, uh, after impact, uh, myocardial impaction, we observe it like uh, 30 minutes, day one and day six, and they see the difference in terms of the cell number and distributions. And also we can use it for the uh, colon imaging as well. And then we can also integrate into the needle and then we can insert it into the solid organ, like a brain. And then you know, observe the uh, cell distribution up to several millimeters. Okay, so yeah, I showed you just uh, several examples and uh, uh, the underlying technique we use to achieve this high resolution cellular level images, imaging and visualization in the uh, live, mode, live mouse model. Okay, so if you're interested, you can find all those YouTube videos and then also in you know, several webinar series in our website, www.ibimtech.com, ibimtech.com. And then we also have our, you know, our uh, the free space option as well. If your application is you know, different from our standard microscope system. And then we also provide some consulting and support, uh, testing and uh, experiment planning service as well. So if you have no idea, so if you have some trouble in doing this intravital imaging experiment, then we can help by providing you know, consultation and also uh, our in-house uh, using our in-house facility, we can do the testing service and also you know, optimize your imaging protocol as well. And if necessary, uh, uh, we can do, so we have our own in-house animal facility and imaging facility. So uh, you can ask us to do the imaging analysis for you. So this was one example. So in this case, uh, these people ask us to, to image the exosome uh, in the live sepsis mouse model. So this is our result data. So they provide us the uh, process exosome in red color. So what it did was it injected those red color, uh, red process exosome into the mouse model. And 10 minutes and 30 minutes after, we visualized the delivery of this exosome to the target cell. At 10 minutes, it's mainly on the surface. At 30 minutes, it, this exosome was actually internalized in this target cell. So yeah, to summarize this, uh, we IV technology is it, it's specialized in intravital microscope. And then we are also has a very strong you know, research background as well. So we have an uh, in-house specialist team with know-how and experience more than 10 years of intravital imaging with the live mouse, various live mouse model. So our system, is all in a system. So we test in the key features such as motion compensation function and animal monitoring and maintenance. And then we also provide, you know, uh, the comprehensive set of apparatus and device for various tissue and organ imaging. And also if necessary, we also provide uh, intermittent imaging identity service as well. And then upon request, we also provide the training service as well to uh, make her uh, live mouse model for intervital images. Okay, so thank you very much for uh, your attention. And then the hands-on demo unit are uh, always the you know, best way for you to see how this equipment, this microscope can serve for your study. So you can you know, always ask for the demonstration uh, to, to us to really show you to how this our microscope can work with the target organ or any area in for your studies. So uh, we are providing the uh, Google form. So if you have any questions uh, or request, please let us know.